All right. Well, good morning, almost afternoon, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Randy. I'm a cloud native ambassador at the CNCF, and this is the capacity scheduling for elastic resource sharing in Kubernetes session. And I would like you all online and here in person to welcome Juan Chen from Apple. Thank you, Randy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are so excited to be here. It's the first uh, on-site event almost in two years. It's my sixth and KubeCon also my sixth talk and now on-site and hope can get and uh, make new friends, get connected with the community for those people who are virtual and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. So today, I'm co-presenting our work on capacity scheduling in Kubernetes with Qing Chan. Unfortunately, Qing Chan is not able to attend in person. He will present a demo in a pre-recorded video later. So a little bit about ourselves. Qing Chan is a software engineer from Alibaba Cloud. He has been a very and active contributor in Kubernetes especially the SIG scheduling group. He made a lot of the code contribution, design contribution to the Kubernetes scheduler. I'm Yuan Chen from Apple Cloud Services. I'm a Kubernetes contributor too, and my work is mainly focused on the Kubernetes scheduling performance scalability. Okay, I'd like to start with some background context and motivations about the work. As all of, all of us know, Kubernetes has become a de facto cluster and cloud resource management platform. So more and more workloads and different type of workloads are running in Kubernetes. In addition to the traditional service workloads, and now there are more batch workloads from the machine learning, deep learning to big data workloads are running in Kubernetes. A key issue we have realized after talking to our customers is there are some look at the today's Kubernetes. How does Kubernetes manage resources between different users or namespace? So the quarter is a basic concept, but quarter mainly used the just for the admission control or capacity planning, not involve the scheduling and in a more dynamic way. The secondly, the quarter so far, we can define just a single value, for example, for each namespace, that's the request, the total request a namespace can ask for. The third one is during the wrong time, the resource coordination is purely based on priority and the default preemption, we base on priority to do this and eviction to achieve this kind of the fairness or the resource allocation. So as a result, we can see and it enacts some of this more flexible or dynamic resource sharing. Traditional cluster management system like the Hadoop Young can offer as a, also, this can cause no resource and cross resource utilization. This two and the key of this and the shortcoming disadvantage has become a roadblock for many customers to migrate from traditional cluster management system to Kubernetes. To address this, we have been working and uh, in the upstream community and collaborating with a lot of contributors on two of the key and uh, concepts. One is the we call it terms elastic quarter. The idea is can introduce a define and provide a more flexible the building block can support more flexible dynamic resource sharing across the namespace and users. Also, it will provide some kind of the resource guarantee and the fairness. Finally, we extended the flat 
kind of the causal structure to a tree or hierarchy level to better manage the resource across the different user organization. That is what also other like Hadoop Young and offer capacity planning or, or scheduling or fair scheduling. So now let me and uh, talk a little bit detail about what the inestive quarter is. So inestive quarter is a CRD. The difference from the traditional or existing built-in resource quarter is we introduce basically two fields or values for each elastic quarter. One is minimum, that is guaranteed quarter for namespace. The second one is maximum, is the limit of the namespace. Be aware here, when we talk about the quarter, we basically refer to the request, request, not the limit, because this is more and what the schedule make decision and we look at the request only. So it supports multiple resource type from the building, CPU, memory, disk, to extended resource like GPU or other resources. So I already mentioned, so it's a different concept from the building or native and resource quarter. So this resource quarter is more for admission control, but the now elastic quarter is more used by the scheduler and coordinated resource sharing at runtime. So the right side is a simple example. Here is a elastic quarter named test. It's associated with a namespace test. So as you can see, it's quite straightforward. So it defined or specified maximum and minimum resources in terms of CPU, memory, and GPU. By the way, throughout my presentation, so I'm using the GPU as an example, but it can apply to any type of resources like CPU or memory. So how can we guarantee? So the basic idea for each namespace with the elastic quarter it means the minimum quarter will be guaranteed and you can get that much of the quarter. So the maximum is opportunistically if there are additional resources available in a cluster, you can borrow the quarter from other namespace or user to run it. But what happened if there are contentions? So this is how the resource guarantee fairness is very important. So to implement this, basically we implemented a customer preemption. So at wrong time, if a namespace submit ports, but it cannot be, cannot be scheduled because it's caught her and has been used or borrowed by other namespace. So the preemption, we try to identify those overused namespace. So means they already use more quarter than its guarantees. Then among all these and the candidate namespace, I should take off my and mask, sorry about that. So after it identify those, then it will identify a list of the candidates or victim ports victims. So, so far we implemented a simple policy based on a priority and also try to minimize the number of the evicted ports. Of course, one of the extensions probably have more of the fairness and keep balanced across different namespace that can be added in the future versions. So this and the elastic quarter is a CRD. The customer preemption is implemented as a scheduler plugin. So for those who are not familiar with the scheduler framework, it's basically provide a uniform platform that allow the developer to customize, optimize the scheduler. So any of this plugin will be built into the main scheduler. So we are not introducing a second scheduler. I think this is a key advantage means this is a Kubernetes native solution. You still just run a single scheduler with additional plugin. There are no risk condition problem. You can share the cache, other thing. Also you can disable or enable the scheduler plugin. So a lot of detail here, but the key thing is there are three plugin. The pre-filter, we check the quarter, make sure when it's a scheduler port, right? This port 
and have to make sure it's and uh, beat the cannot exceed the maximum quarter. Post filter basically is preemption. If a port, a namespace is under you used its guaranteed quarter, then have to perform preemption. The reserve stage is when you schedule a node, uh, when you schedule a port, the schedule have reserved some resources to avoid the risk condition. So here is example of elastic quarter. So there are two namespace. Namespace one have the minimum or guarantee and a quarter of four. Fourth GPU, six, maximum of six GPU. The another one have the minimum of six and a maximum of eight GPU respectively. So at the beginning, each of them only use two GPU and the three GPU. So it's fine. It's even a less than their minimum one. But later, the namespace one or user one requested additional resources, then the scheduler can schedule more ports up to its maximum one is six GPU. The next step, but the namespace two submit more ports or workloads that requested more resources. Now the scheduler realized, right? This namespace one overutilized, used its guaranteed quarter. So the customer preemption will be kicked in and evicted ports from the namespace one. So now the namespace one use four GPU, namespace two use six GPU. This is their guarantee or minimum one. So that's the fairness we want to achieve. Next, I'm briefly describing an extension of the work. So far, what we're describing here is a flat quarter and uh, structure. But more and more users want to map the quarter management, resource management to the organization or teams. So the hierarchy or tree kind of a structure would be a very desirable feature. So this two example, so we can create this and tree or hierarchy quarter group from the root and aggregate the entire cluster resources also have a minimum or mean. So it's children, right? The sum of its children's minimum should be equal than its parent minimum, then its maximum should be less than its parent's maximum. Then at the leaf level, the namespace will be associated with the leaf levels and the quarter group. So this way we can manage the resource in a more dynamic and flexible and manner. Uh, I hope it's and readable and uh, I apologize if it, the font's too small. So here example, so just extend the previous example. So now in order to define a quarter group, a user can specify the minimum and the maximum, but also there are additional field called children. So it's a nested structure. So each quarter group can specify the the, the children the quarter group, then the children quarter group define the minimum and the maximum. Then finally also can have its own children. Next, I'm talking a little about, it's related to the batch workload, batch workload support in Kubernetes, but not directly and related to the scheduling. It's the job queue. As we know, the workloads and the batch workloads come and running and gone. So typically, we need to manage or buffer the job when the resource is not available. So that's how we need a job queue management. So to address this, and a job queue management is introduced to the system as well. So it's managing the workloads not the ports. The ports is the schedule and the concept. So far, the policy is based on the priorities of the job and the creation time of the job or submission time of the job and also the quarter constraint then decided and which job or should be scheduled next. So a new feature and we're still working on is concrete multiple queue, right? 
For example, each user or each tenant can submit their jobs to different queue, then based on certain policies and either fair sharing or other more advanced policy, the management system can achieve or provide more flexible or fairness across the user and tenants. So here is a, a high level and architecture about how the job queue is designed or implemented. So the idea is when a job is submitted, an uh, annotation, like a suspend annotation is added. So then later, and the job will be added to the queue. So based on the policy, when a job is dequeued from the job queue, then the annotation will be removed, then the different operators then got the notification, will submit or create the ports. So one thing I want to uh, mention is because there are all type of different application level specific workloads, right? From TensorFlow, your PyTorch, Spark, MPI, they have different description or schema for their jobs. So now in the, we are working on the extension, different extensions support different workloads. So the key function of the extension is to convert or adapt the application specific job definition to a unified and generic descriptions in the queue. We call, we term it's queue unit so that we can support a different type of jobs and the workloads. Okay, so next I'm going to show a demo created by Qing Chan. So very unfortunate if we are not able to make the, the, the audio and the work and uh, otherwise Qing Chan would be the best to present about the work. So I, I, I'm trying to, to explain it. Okay, maybe I can just click it. No, it's not working. I have the video here, right? Okay. So in this demo, it's really it's running a GPU cluster. So we create elastic quarter and namespace, then from different namespace, submit to the jobs and you will see and how the jobs and the, the different namespace or users share the resources in a more dynamic way. Also how the job queue to manage the different jobs. Okay, let me quickly move to here because we cannot hear the Qin Chang's voice and uh, so then let's see and uh, the command. Okay, so now the first step, we just create uh, and uh, two namespace. Namespace one, namespace two. The next step is create the elastic quarter with the minimum or guaranteed quarter and the maximum or the limit of the quarter. Okay, so you can see here now we create a elastic quarter for each namespace and the maximum is four GPU and the minimum is two GPU. By the way, and so far we assume and the total capacity of this tiny and dummy cluster have total of four CPU cards. So each namespace means it will get two GPU as a guaranteed resource, but it can use up to four GPU if another user is not using the resources. So as you can see here, min and max. So next step is we are going to create some jobs in each namespace. See how these jobs or ports are running and in a cluster or scheduled and running in a cluster. Now let me see and uh, okay, that's the that's the quarter. So for the jobs now, so the namespace one will submit three jobs. Each job have two workers because TensorFlow work. So each job have two work, each work 
is using one GPU. So it means each job is using two GPU. That also means a total of four GPU means because there are only four GPU in a cluster. There are only two jobs can run at the same time. So you can see here is, right? There are two workers. The replicas is two and each one, the resource request one GPU. So let's see if the user one in the namespace one submit three this type of the jobs. So what will happen? Ching Chan probably have some the more insight and here. So okay, let's see. It's still Okay, that's the first job created. Again, the each job we basically is requesting two GPU. So user one launched three jobs. So let's see the status. Okay. As we just described, so two jobs are running. Each is using two GPU and then up to four GPU. The job three is queuing in the job queue because there are no resources available to run job three. Next, let's see what's happening if user two in namespace two is submitting a job two to the system. So namespace two is submitting a job, the same type and the request to GPU. So because there are two workers. So what we are expecting is then because so far there are no GPU, free GPU available. So the preemption will be kicking, then evict some jobs or ports from namespace one. Then the job user two or namespace two can get the resources run its job. Let's see the status. Okay, so far and uh, because it takes some time and uh, the job two so far it's not getting resources, it's queuing. But then during this queuing and the stage, the scheduler will identify the victims and the candidates. So as you can see now, the job two in the namespace one is being evicted and the ports will be evicted. Then the job now, okay. So it's interesting because the job one in namespace one completes so the job three got a chance to run because it's requested two CPU. Then job two, or job one of the namespace two, as we described, and after the preemption eviction succeeded, it started running as well. Then the job two of the namespace one was evicted and preempted because it's overused the, the guaranteed resources. So as you can see this demo and the show how this resource is dynamic sharing between namespace one and the namespace two. So when namespace one didn't use the resources, guaranteed resources, namespace one can run two jobs. Then, but later when namespace two needed the resources and the namespace one has to, yeah, the scheduler will use preemption to reclaim the resources to run the workloads. So now, and uh, the implementation is simple, and after evicting uh, jobs, and it will stay in the field, failure in the stage, but definitely, and uh, we can extend it either by application levels and job management resubmit it. We are also discussing if it's because of this and uh, elastic quota and the contention 
that make a port and terminate it early, then maybe we can automatically resubmit it to the queue, right? Then it will run later when resources are available. So this is uh, the demo to show how the Elastic Quarter work and also the job queue. Hope you find it and uh, useful and have a better idea about how this Elastic Quarter and uh, working. Okay, so now and uh, the current status of the Elastic Quarter of Capacity Planning is we have two open source projects. The first one is implemented this Elastic Quarter and Capacity Scheduling. The core component is the customer preemption. It's part of the SIG scheduling out of tree plugin. So you can check out the code and uh, play it with this and uh, in the SIG uh, scheduler and uh, plugin repo. So the second one is independent or separate and uh, project repo is how to manage the workload and provide this and uh, job queue management functionality. We just uh, make it public and before the conference, it's still under active development. So now it supports uh, TensorFlow and uh, the PyTorch extension. So Spark, MPI, other thing, and still working on. Also, we look forward to contributions from all of you. So the hi hierarchy quarter will be released in the next. So in terms of the early adopters, so Alibaba already and applied this elastic core capacity planning in production, the Alibaba cloud. So at Apple, we are actively investigating how to provide this job queue and elastic scheduling functions to support running the Spark workload in our Kubernetes infrastructure. Baidu is looking at use this to run their self-driving and all this AI and based on simulation workloads. So here is a list of reference and you may find useful and the repo and some documents. So this is a, a joint effort in the upstream community. Without the collaboration, it would not be possible to even have the reach this stage. So we really want to thank all these contributors who has contributed to the ideas, the coding, the designs. We also look forward to working with everyone and uh, so you can try out the projects, provide the feedback or contribute the code, design or submit the issues or suggesting recommendations. Everything would be highly appreciated and welcome. Okay, I think that's all I have. And uh, so I, I'm happy to take some questions was after the talk. Yeah, I will be around. So if you have any questions, yeah. Also, I'll, I'll just note for the online folks, um, we'll be taking questions online too. So feel free to drop those in if you're online. And don't forget to review the session on Sketch too. Thank you for this. This is amazing work. Uh, one question I had, you, basically you're ticking all the boxes of uh, what we need for scientific like uh, workloads. One that you didn't mention is gang scheduling. Is this also supported by the scheduler you described? Uh, can you speak a little bit louder? Uh, sorry, sorry. I was uh, just saying that this is amazing. You're ticking all the boxes of the stuff we need. Uh, one that you didn't mention is gang scheduling. Uh, when you're uh, doing the workload allocation, is this something that the scheduler also supports? Like uh, scheduling multiple jobs at the same time, waiting for the slot, things like this. Oh yeah, so so by scheduling and uh, so I, I, I should have a clarify, right? As you can see now, basically there are two levels. One is a job queue level. This is uh, the workload or job as a unit. So the the queue management system will determine who, which job 
is the next job to schedule, right? As I mentioned, there are some policies there. So this is separate. You can think it's outside of the Kubernetes and the schedule, independent of Kubernetes schedule. Then the second one is within Kubernetes, the key component and the cube schedule. This is at port level, right? When the job is picked from the job queue, then all the ports within that job will be submitted to API server. Then in the scheduled queue, then at that time, it's just the default scheduled behavior and to do. But we have a plugin, as I showed, a pre-filled plugin. Also, we check, make sure if the scheduler schedule a port, make sure the resources, total amount of resources won't exceed, right, this namespace and the maximum, the elastic port resources. Did I answer your question? Oh, thank you. Great, thank you. And, uh, an online question that's got a bunch of votes here is, um, are the elastic quota and job queue components um, going to end up in the Kate scheduling SIG, you know, mix um, at any point in time? Yeah, so, so far we, we, we believe, as I mentioned, this elastic quota capacity planning is already part of the SIG scheduling and out of tree repo, and it's been there well, and uh, we tested extensively, and it's just the CRD plus the plugin of the schedule. So it's basically just Kubernetes native solution. Alibaba already applied it in production, so we definitely welcome and more testing and try it. And so, so far, and uh, we just hope and we can get more and uh, yeah, adoption and uh, yeah, people test it and then yeah, we can improve it. And uh, so that's the goal and uh, yeah, make it in the production ready, yeah, widening and broadening. Excellent, thank you. Uh, just. I may be completely misunderstanding or missing a problem, but could this be used for sort of like nomad style of scheduling where instead of having an HPA that has to sort of respond to a metric not being in the right threshold and then scheduling more pods, make sure that you have pods scheduled maximally across all your nodes so that if there is a surge in traffic on any workload, like a web workload, it is possible that it already has more than it needs. And if not, then you can evict something that does have more than it needs and then do the scale up. Yeah, so so I would see, like I said, there are multiple and the decision and the points and the, in the entire and the life cycle workload. So we talk about there and when the port, the key function of a cube schedule is basically assign, right? Place the ports on the nodes. So if you are familiar with the Kubernetes schedule and the functionality, there are different algorithm are plugging there and the bin packing algorithm, either spreading the ports, right, or more best fit consolidation with other constraint. All this can be and configurable. By default, for example, the Kube schedule just try to spread it and the ports across all the different nodes, but you can configure it a different way. I think it's a little bit orthogonal to whatever and we want to do it. But uh, the more interesting idea I think you mentioned and uh, the comment will make a good point is, I think is the customer probably care more is about the SLO, SLA, right? Can we use some high level metrics to drive this workload or port scheduling, right? I don't care what strategy you apply, right? I want my ports can be scheduled and run within one seconds, two seconds. Yeah, that's uh, I, I think very interesting thing and uh, yeah, the community and we are still brainstorming, but uh, I have to admit it's still a little bit too early stage. How to have a SLA, SLO driven and uh, yeah, scheduling. Hi. Um, yeah, I was wondering uh, if this was compatible with clusters with the cluster autoscaler or autoscaling groups enabled. Um, Technically, in that scenario, shouldn't a cluster have like infinite resources? This seems more applicable for clusters with like a fixed set of resources. So, in terms of the compatibility, again, so the elastic quarter and the, the capacity scheduling pieces, like I said, is yeah, it's purely and uh, compatible with any upstream and the Kubernetes code. And just uh, Matthew rebuilt the, the, the schedule with the plugin and uh, define the CRD. The job queue and is a separate concept. We try to make it more extensible. Like and you just provide or the project will provide different extensions, can run different workload. 
So overall, and uh, I would see, and uh, we try to make it and uh, independent or agnostic to right what the application level's workloads or what and uh, your workload management system. So by providing this the standard API for job queue, by building this preemption and uh, elastic quarter into the native in a native Kubernetes way. But again, yeah, if there are any suggestions or concerns or some features and you feel and uh, we should have or desirable and please, yeah, check out code or submit the issues and of course more and uh, yeah, hopefully you can help us or contribute to the project and code. All right, well, thank you very much, Juan. We were about time here, so wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. I wish you have a wonderful rest of the event.